Well, Mark, I've been meaning to talk to you about your prostate. Yeah. <laughs> this could be a whole other movie. <laughs> All right, Mark Deering here from the Adventure Channel. We have Martin Hall next to us. Uh, many of you know him. He is a legend in the mountain bike community here. And uh, you're a legend. You've been. That's, you've that's been... a scary thought. <laughs> He's a, he's a key component to the Dragon Trail going up in Croton area. Um, he, we just got done talking about your large history going on with the Yankee time trial, which is what we're going to focus on a little bit right now. Um, so yeah, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about, um, I guess, Yankee and, and the, back, the history of that Great. race. Great. Well, as Mark said, I'm Martin Hall, uh, recently moved from Caledonia to Croton so I could be closer to my pet project, the Dragon Trail. <laughs> uh, but with my years in the Caledonia Yankee Springs area, I've been involved with the Yankee time trial uh, for a couple of decades. In 2008, the West Michigan Mountain Bike Alliance took over the Yankee Springs time trial. The Yankee time trial started in 1990. It's the original mountain bike race in the state of Michigan. Uh, so oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So in 2008, we took that over and the chapter has been running it um, ever since then. And, you know, you got to understand that the, the time trial is a complete volunteer run event. 100% of the proceeds of the event go back to the chapter and those monies then are invested in building new trails. Maybe at the Dragon, maybe at the Merrill, where we're doing some rebuilds this year. All over our region, those monies are a key funder of those activities. Let's say that again, because that, that's the part that really spoke to me. Like, this is one of the very few races that um, is put on, and literally every dime that comes in goes right back into the association to build trails. Not saying there's anything wrong with any of the other promoters. Those are all awesome, too. But this one, I... Um, weighs heavy on my heart because I want to participate because it's literally every dime's going back into the into right. the ra um, all of the different trails. There are two chapters in Michigan that, that I know of that do that, and that's uh, us and Southwest chapter the at Fort Custer. They put on a race in May okay. that is also a funder for their uh, trail system there. Um, Stampede or what's that one called? Uh, Fort they've Custer. got one in the fall and okay. one in the spring, and, okay. and I. Don't remember when it's sure. the cross country race. Sure, sure not sure. the time trial. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, but the the race will generate some fairly significant dollars for the chapter uh, in a good year. Not when we're in COVID. Uh, generally, that's upwards of twenty thousand dollars or more that we put back into the chapter for trails. Uh, and you know, it's really important that you come out and participate and be involved with that so that we're able to have more and better trails in West Michigan. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's that's what I was getting at is like, oh wow, every dollar goes back in. So, um, you know, we all love, if you're watching this, you're an avid mountain biker in West Michigan or Michigan in general. And uh, we all know we love new trails. We all love, you know, different projects that are going on. Um, it took me a little while to uh, about six years of just biking to then figure out like the whole other side of it where it's literally a volunteer community like we get the trails if we volunteer if we donate if we fundraise if we this and that it's a lot different than a lot of other sports and uh, we're our own ambassador to get nicer trails so when you start finding out as a mountain biker hopefully you already know this but showing up for trail days um, showing up for events like this the yankee time trial to um, where your dollars go is, is pretty darn cool. So I don't want people to look, overlook that. It took right. me a little while to figure that out. Right. No, it, it's critical for the future of our, our um, activity uh, that, that we participate and show up. Uh, you know, but by the same token, don't get, get me wrong that, that promoters aren't good. For example, oh, absolutely not. Uh, Mark Van Tongren serves on our committee for the Yankee time trial. So even yep. though he's a promoter, he's out here helping us making it a success uh, so we all work together everybody has to show up absolutely yep absolutely and that you know we know mark as well and uh, we help him on with the lord of the springs a little bit and and uh yeah you know that is an amazing race too so 
The, let's talk a little bit about um, the history of Yankee um, Springs Trail and uh, maybe even let's talk a little bit about some of the things with the race that they're making it kind of um, giving something the beginner to maybe do. Right. So the, the Yankee, uh, the, the Deep Lake Trail system is 13 miles. There's 11 miles on the south side of, of the driveway and two miles, a warm-up loop on the north side of the driveway. And the, the typical race that we, we run is counterclockwise on the trail. And the experts and uh, elites and experts do two laps. So they're running 22 miles. And then sports do one full lap, which is 11 miles. and Last year, and we're continuing it uh, on, we have a beginner loop, which is about seven miles. And it cuts out the back, kind of the back uh, five miles or four miles of the trail, which is where all of the, the big hills are. And we want this to be friendly for our beginners. And we all know that during COVID, we got a lot more people out yeah. riding bikes and we don't want people to be intimidated. Uh, you know, they need to be able to come out and do these things. So that's why we kind of shortened it up and made it uh, more more user friendly for our beginner riders. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, uh, like you say, we ha in the last couple of years we're seeing, you know, new bikes, um, new helmets. People that just got their bikes, just got their helmets, and they're out there. And uh, we want to, you know, we're an advocate of our group rides and getting new people into the sport, getting new people into racing, and then. You know, to get them into racing, you want to not send them over the deep edge and, and you know, and uh, get them in over their head or have them never want to show up again. So I like the, the shortened thing. I just thought of this as you said that, though, and I was talking to Eric um, that uh, the split off, um, I went the wrong way last year. <laughs> I started going the wrong way, stopped, looked around. Everybody kept going wrong way. I had to turn around. We might have to mark that a little better. <laughs> I didn't look at it last year. I'm kind of busy starting everybody. Sure, sure, race. sure, sure. But uh, we thought we had it. No, it was. We marked. thought we had it. It was for marked. Everybody. It was marked pretty good. I just, I just, it was my fault for sure. But uh, um, so yeah, that's and then the kids get involved on this race. Uh, it's super cool to see um, the kids race on the short two mile section. You got the um, Striders. You got all the um, little guys over there. It's a whole different program going on at the same time, right? right? Right. So. We, we run it on the two mile warm up loop um, so that we don't have to worry about them getting run over or, or being worried about it. Once again, it's about uh, making everybody comfortable while they're there and, and particularly for kids because, you know, we know that they go down a few times. Some of them may not want to do it again. Sure. Keeping so it fun. We, yeah, exactly. Keeping it fun. So uh, refresh my memory. There's some camping back there, um, but I think it's first come, first serve on a county site or? Uh, no, this is a, it's a state park. Okay. A deep lake campground. It's a rustic campground uh, that you would register a site, a reserve a site through the state reservation system, okay. Michigan uh, Parks rec re Reservation System. Okay. Um, but yeah, they've got them. Um, and it gets a little tight on space because of the number of cars that come in on race day. Sure, sure. Uh, and, and some place to park everybody. In fact, we have to have an overflow uh, set up so that if, if we run out of space, we still have some place for people to go. Sure. Uh, this year, uh, the racing will start uh, on Saturday morning at nine o'clock with the elite racers going off. And then at 10 o'clock, uh, we start the experts or they're about, we, we want the elites to get through their first lap before we start the, the first experts. And then the experts, the, the elites are able to finish their race without running into slower people. And the experts are able to, to race theirs without running into slower people. Sure. Uh, sure. And then the, the, um, Sports. Sports run after 12, I mean, I think. 12 o'clock. Yep, yep. Uh, trying the same thing to make sure that nobody's running into somebody that's slower. Or, you know, when you get 700 people on a, a trail that's mostly single track, you, you got to pass someplace. So yeah, we yeah. try to minimize conflicts. I will say, I will say, um, I do the sport Clydesdale class, and I will say, um, I have been lucky and got um, started near the front a couple times. They registered early. That's a whole other thing we can talk about. 
Um, is that still the thing where you register early, you get a, a further seat, seat up the front? So a little pro tip, if you want to do it again next year, register the day of and you get more towards the front. Right. That's, a, that's a nice... And then show up at your start time on time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a factor. Um, so that's always been a contention with people coming later. In fact, I believe this year we're just going to tell you that your start, your race starts at nine o'clock. Oh, to make sure that. So that you don't think you're going off at 10 past nine. 10 past and you're and using you, the bathroom and yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to try to make it once again a little more user friendly. Sure, sure. We'll see how that works. It's been, it from the consumer side, it's felt super organized, um, you know, and I haven't felt rushed or whatever. I liked the time you know, whatever, 12, 13 or 12, 14, and it hasn't had any issue there. And back to that point about the traffic, um, you know, taking off with the sport, I don't know, it's probably not different with the elite and the expert, but you'd think, I think there's a misconception too, 700 people on a 11 mile loop, that there's gonna be a lot of traffic and passing and whatnot, but surprisingly, it's not that, it's not bad at all. Well, we spread it out. Yep, how many seconds between or how does it? It'll depend on the number of people that are, okay. are pre-registered. Okay. We'll determine how far apart we, we send them off. Um, it used to be, we at one point, we did um, two racers every five seconds. Oh. And during COVID years, we were down to one racer every 10 seconds. Okay. Because okay. we had the time to make that work. Uh, so we, we kind of have to, like everybody, improvise. Sure based sure. on, on I just, numbers. I just was envisioning the uh, two every five seconds. That, that cre it creates a drag race every five seconds. <laughs> it does. They look at each other and decide who's starting first. <laughs> How fast are you? How yeah, fast yeah, are yeah. you? Yeah, size each other up. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, so... Um, well, it's, it's a great event. We've got a great team. Um, Amy Kimber has, has been our chairman for the last two years and does a great job of getting everything organized and making it happen. But then we've got a, a team of people that have done it since 2008. Sure. So it's, it's all kind of old hat. This is what you have to do. Sure. And you know, over that time period, with experience, things get better. Oh, so, it's, it's a well-oiled machine from what I've seen. You know. Thanks. Yeah, you've got, uh, um, you've got the uh, little beer area. Sure, Saugatuck Brewing is going to be our sponsor, uh, sponsoring the, the beer festivities or after party sure. uh, this year. And uh, we're excited to have them back working with us again and excited to have you guys come out and be part of it. Absolutely, absolutely. And inside the beer tent area, Adventures with Remax, come over and get a can koozie from us. <laughs> That's also where the awards will be. So we want to make it easy that you're able to uh, enjoy yourself in the after party. Perfect, perfect. Um, I think that covers most of what we wanted to talk about. Um, it's an awesome trail. It is, um, I will say, it's got this, uh, a little bit of this vibe of being a, a good training grounds. Um, it is more of like the natural style trail. It, it's old school single track. Yes, and I love it. Like that and state game area are two of my favorites. You know, I like the old school stuff. Um, so if you haven't been, which I highly doubt, but get out and check it out. Um, but uh, don't be intimidated to race there, I would say. Um, it's a great community, um, great event, I should say, in the team tents all along that little, mm -hmm. little section there. Um, it's a laid back vibe, but you know, it doesn't have to be race, race, race. It doesn't have to be laid back. It can, you can get what you want out of that event. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. Please come out. All right, well, uh, any questions, guys, put some comments down below. We'll try to answer them as you have them. And uh, the website, obviously, just look up Yankee Time Trial, um, and we can probably throw some links on here for you, too. But I think there's, um, we won't get into the deadlines and all that, because this video will air at different times. But uh, great event, and uh, thanks for coming out. Mark, thank you for having us. Yes, thank look you. Look forward to seeing everybody there.